we need you know, to, to get the covariances like we mentioned, we just need n estimates of beta. Did we mention why it might be convenient to sit there and say, okay, well, um, it, you know, if we are using Markowitz, we have to say, what is the covariance? Somebody has to estimate what's the covariance between the returns on Ford uh, and the return on Goldman Sachs, right? And you know, somebody else has to estimate, co you know, or you have to estimate the covariance between you know the return on Exxon and the return on Apple. But here, all somebody has to do is estimate the beta of Apple, the beta of Goldman Sachs, the beta of 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 you know IBM. Uh, and they don't have to, you know, so in other words, we just estimate these individual betas and, and multiply them together. Why might this be much more convenient than estimating this? Can we talk about this? I just realized I'm running out of time. I waited too long to start the lecture. Uh, <laughs> Give me, uh, you, you, I trust you'll give me like four minutes. Thank you. Um, what's, the, uh, what's the benefit? Well, here, let me ask you. If you're going to estimate this, you've got to, you know, you, you, you know you're going to estimate the relationship. You're estimating the, the relationship between Ford and Goldman Sachs. What do we know about banking analysts? Or let me say, does it make sense for you to estimate the relationship between two companies that make um, have nothing to do with each other. When, you, when you're an analyst, right, or, or the, the idea here is for you to really understand companies, what do you have to focus on? One particular set of companies. In other words, um, it's too much for me to understand how Apple runs its business and Ford runs its business, right? You, you, this is, you, need, you know, people specialize. So this is why we naturally have tech analysts and, and, uh, and auto analysts, right? Because I can understand how the auto industry works, so I can understand how the banking industry works, and then I can focus on that. So in other words, the real nice thing about this is uh, um, uh, I can go to the tech analyst and say, okay, you know, uh, give me uh, the beta of, of Apple. And I can go to the banking analyst and say, give me the beta of Goldman Sachs and so forth. So I have these betas e um, estimated by experts in that industry. Does that make sense? Because these betas are the sensitivity of these stocks to the macro factors. So in other words, the person who's going to know that best is the banking analyst, the auto analyst, the tech analyst, right? So in other words, this allows me to benefit from, you know, uh, specialization, analyst specializations. So I can go and get a good estimate from an analyst instead of people having to estimate across sectors like this, which won't work out very well. Does that make sense? So that's a really nice thing about this, where, you know, we can have, there's many estimates of the, you know, variance of the market. This is, you know, we, uh, an economist will give you an estimate of the, you know, the variance of the market. Uh, and then you can get these two from, from proper analysts. And then you can have some, you know, or this would be a better input into Markowitz. So the idea is this will give us uh, much better inputs into Markowitz than uh, just, um, you know, uh, particularly estimating covariances. And estimating covariances uh, is, is unwieldy. You would just have to do it on historical returns. And, we know that if you do it on historical returns, it's pretty much um, uh, uh, very sensitive to, to um, uh, estimation error. Good. All right. So the next thing that I would want to do and talk about this is, oh, you know, uh, also keep in mind, we can get the correlation between any security. Uh, how, what's the relationship between the covariance and the correlation? So I'll just show you briefly how to get the, the correlation between any security. Um, which, uh, so the covariance of x and y, um, the correlation coefficient is equal to, to the, you know, so the correlation coefficient of x and y is equal to what? Covariance of x and y. Standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, Schwartz inequality, this is, this is, are going to be less than one between negative one and one. Um, so we can easily use this to get the, 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 um, the uh, correlation between any two securities. So if I sit there and say, okay, the correlation coefficient between stocks I and J, um, all I have to do is amend this. It's going to be the covariance between R sub I and R sub J, which is going to be um, beta I, beta J, sigma squared M. And if I multiply this, um, and then it's going to be um, uh, standard deviation of i, standard deviation of j. Uh, and then if I multiply this by 
um, the variance of the market divided by the variance of the market, which of course I can do because that's just equal to one. Uh, then this is going to be equal to beta i variance of the market um, sigma squared i uh, 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 standard, uh, standard deviation of i standard deviation of the market times beta j variance of the market standard deviation of j standard deviation of the market and what's this equal to? What are each of these terms in parentheses equal to? Beta i standard deviation of the market. So look at this thing here. I might leave this for you to to. Uh, well, I mean, you'll see it. This is uh, this is just equal to um, covariance uh, return. Oh, sorry, correlation. Um, correlation of I in the market times the correlation of J in the market. So I also can get the correlation coefficient by just taking correlation of I in the market, correlation J in the market, and that'll give me the correlation between the two stocks. Of course. You know, we don't necessarily need the correlation coefficient. We just, you know, use the covariance. But we can get the correlation coefficient easily as well. Um, all right, before we go, last thing. By the way, um, we're going to talk more about this. The next thing I want to do is show that, um, you know, the benefits of diversification, meaning if I create a portfolio, uh, then this term is going to go away in the portfolio. So I'll do that next. Uh, but before we leave this, is there anything that we have assumed when we use this as the index model? Is there anything that we've assumed that I haven't mentioned? And this is going to be really important for pairs trading. The only thing that affects a particular stock, so let me, and I'll, I, this will be a timely, um, say this is Exxon, uh, Ex, Exxon Mobil. The only thing that affects the returns on ExxonMobil is the returns on the macro factor and firm specific risk. Do you buy that? No. What else affects the returns on ExxonMobil? Meaning, what has just happened to the every stock in the oil uh, um, EMP sector? Exploration and production. What's that? They've gone down. They've gone down, right? But has Apple gone down? No. Right. So, in other words, this doesn't uh, doesn't take into account industry risk. Perfect. So, in other words, uh, one thing is, again, this is not, you know, this is, we'll talk about this as the market model, the index model. One thing to keep in mind is, as soon as you start estimating this, um, you're not taking into account um, uh, industry effects. So, if you just, you know, one, you might want to include industry effects, and two, if you don't include industry effects, you have to start thinking about where that is going to show up, because it will show up in the parameters, right? It's just that, you know, uh, you'll have, you know, that industry effect rolling up in other parameters. Um, good. All right, thank you for the extra minutes, uh, and I'll see you on Wednesday, and we'll talk more about this, and I'll, again, I'll, um, we'll see you on Wednesday.